Hi, and thank you for tuning in to Gavin Lon Digital. I'm Gavin Lon. In this part of the course, i.e. part 22, we'll create the code to display the course item content to the user. So in the previous part of this course, i.e. part 21, we created the code to display category and grouped category items by category to the user in a collapsible list. So once the user is logged onto the system, the courses and course items matched to the user are displayed to the logged on user. At the moment, the user does not have the ability to access content associated with the relevant category items. In this tutorial, we'll create the code whereby the user is able to consume the course item content by clicking the relevant list item from the collapsible list items presented to the user. When the user clicks on the relevant course items link, this will navigate the user to the relevant Razor view that will contain the user's requested content. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage below in the description. It will be greatly appreciated. So, we are going to create the functionality for a logged on member to access the content associated with a category item from the user interface that we created in the previous part of this course. An example of a category item would be C Sharp Data Types, which is part of the C Sharp for Beginners category or course, which contains both text based content and a video. The user can click on the relevant category which in this case is C-sharp for beginners, whereby the category items are revealed to the user. One of the items is, for example, C-sharp data types. At this point, the user can simply click on the relevant link and be presented with the content associated with the C-sharp data types tutorial or category item. So in order to create this functionality, we must implement code for a content controller class and an index view associated with the content controller class. So let's create a controller class named contentcontroller.cs within the controllers folder within the default area. Let's create code whereby the database context object is passed into the constructor of our content controller class via dependency injection. Then for the index action method, let's create a link query that retrieves the relevant data pertaining to the requested content. This link query is very basic. So when the user clicks a link denoting a category item on the home index view, we want code to execute that navigates the user to the content index view. A parameter containing the relevant category item ID is passed to the index action method within the content controller. Our link query queries the content entity on the passed in category item ID argument, and the result of our link query is passed to the relevant index view. This is the home index view. Remember, only items that have content are displayed in the collapsible list in the home index view. We established this within the relevant link query in the previous tutorial. The content entity has a one-to-one -one relationship with the category item entity. So a category item will have either an item of content or will not have any related content. If a category item does not contain any content, 
This category item will not be made available in the collapsible list on the Home Index view. So the next step is to write the code for the Content Index view. So to associate the Content Controller's index action method with the relevant index view, we must create a directory named Content within the default area, within the Views folder. The association between the relevant index view and index action method is automatic due to a naming convention inherent in the MVC framework. So this is how MVC knows, as it were, that this line of code that returns the result of this view method must invoke the content index view. So the content controller class is inherently associated with the content folder here. And the index action method within the content controller class is inherently associated with the index.cshtml razor view that we are going to create within our content folder. So let's create a view named index.cshtml within the content folder. Let's strongly type our view with the content entity. So if the HTML content property of the content object passed into our index view is not null, we want the raw HTML stored within the property outputted to the user. The HTML helper class's raw method wraps HTML markup in a HTML instance so that it is interpreted as HTML markup. So we can use the HTML.raw method and pass in the HTML content property value, which is a string value, to this method to output the relevant HTML content that will be rendered to the user on the relevant web page. Then the content associated with the relevant category item may contain a YouTube video. So let's write code to check if the relevant content contains a YouTube video link. If the content does contain a YouTube video link, then we want code to execute that will display the YouTube video within an iframe element. And we can do this by setting the iframe elements src attribute to the URL of the relevant video associated with this item of content. So before we test our code, I'm going to log in as an administrator and edit the content for the C-Sharp Delegates category item. So I'm going to update this content item with a video link that points to one of the c -sharp Delegates tutorials hosted on the Gavinlon channel. So to capture the video link that we want from YouTube, we can play the video, right click on the video, and click on the copy embedded code menu item. Let's paste the content copied to our clipboards to a text editor 
and then we can extract the video link from this content. Note that the URL contains the word embed in it. If you want to embed a video within a web page, it is important that the URL contain the word embed within the URL. Basically, if the YouTube video URL contains the word watch in it and not the word embed, this video cannot be embedded within a web page. So let's copy the URL from our text editors and paste it into the video link field. So we want our video to automatically play, so let's append the autoplay parameter to the end of our video link and set its value to 1. Let's associate the advanced c -sharp category to our newly registered user, James, so that when James logs on, he can immediately access the content for the c -sharp delegates category item, which is of course related to the advanced c -sharp category. So let's log on as James. Let's see if we can now access the content associated with the C-sharp delegates category item. Great, but there are two issues. Issue one, the video is not being automatically played when the content view is first loaded. Issue two, the video is arguably too small when displayed on a large screen. So let's fix the first issue, which is a data issue. Let's log on as an administrator and amend the metadata for the relevant item of content. So we need to append a parameter named mute to the end of the relevant video link. This is because our video will not play automatically if the volume is not muted. So the volume must be muted in order for our video to be played automatically when the view first loads. So let's log on as James. Great, our video is automatically played when the content index razor view is loaded within our browsers. So let's fix the second issue. We want our video displayed with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And we want the relevant iframe window to be responsive to various screen sizes. So if a user views the video on a mobile phone or tablet, we want the iframe containing our video to automatically adjust its size accordingly. So to achieve the responsiveness we want for our video display, we can add appropriate CSS to our site.css file. So in the interests of time, I have already copied the relevant CSS code to my clipboard. So I'm going to paste this into the site.css file and of course save the changes. This code will ensure that our video screen is responsive. So let's test the code. Excellent. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and please share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage 
below in the description. It will be greatly appreciated. I really enjoy reading your comments, so please feel free to engage with me in the comments section. The latest code can be found on GitHub. I've included a link to the relevant repository below in the description. Thank you and take care.